Nicholas Samadio has been on fire recently, and, and continuing this trend, he would grab the pole for today's race, uh, race number one at Motoplex Speedway in Vernon, British Columbia, as Ho Jose Bautista gets into the back of the 47, down through turn one, couldn't even wait half a lap before uh, making contact with uh, the other drivers. Some classic short track racing stuff here as the 79 and the 38 get, get together, and now they're three wide for, I believe, around fourth or fifth coming into turn number one, but the caution's already out. Uh, not this lap, they'll be racing back to the line, I believe, as Sam Morrow gets by Jose Bautista and the 20 for that position. Now Michael Kane shoves the 79 up the track as we had a, a fairly large incident down in turn number one. Because of the resulting stack, stack up from the near spin, it would be Prudence Little John, Cameron Gadu, and Johnny Appleseed making some contact. Someone moved just slightly out of line when everyone was making contact and Johnny Appleseed, DJ Curtis, and Andrew Rick all collected. Prudence Littlejohn, though, with significant damage to that 31 car, not a great start for one of the hometown favorites here. Uh, of course, the Littlejohns from Point Roberts, Washington. Initially, this is by far the closest they will get to a home race. DJ Harris went around for a quick spin, trying to avoid the accident. He came down on TJ Dent. And the 36 went for a quick spin. That'll cost him several positions as he races back towards the line, even losing position to Prudence Littlejohn, Little who got turned hard into the wall uh, there at the beginning of this incident. Samadio returns the field back to the green flag conditions. Eight laps, uh, seven laps in out of this 80 lap race as Matthew Nicholson goes for the fifth uh, after third from the 58. We'll grab that position, it appears, the 58 trying to struggle back on the outside, not, definitely not going to be enough for him to retain that position. The restarts, of course, the, the by far the easiest uh, spot to try and get the position from someone else as the 13 bumps the 47, as I believe a couple of cars have actually had to come into the pits uh, for, for passing before we even got to the green. Yep, there was a big stack up coming towards the green flag and it would be Sidney Craston who got turned down the racetrack, would overtake James Silverfox. P2 London got around Mike Doan also before the line, and because of that, both of, them, both of them have to come in for 10 second penalties. That'll put them both one lap down. Michael Kane having a surprisingly good run for once in the 75 car, getting by the 10 uh, for around sixth position. Had a good qualifying effort, and now uh, making up some, pos some positions early on. Good job for him. E2 London merged back onto the track, forcing the 8 and the 27 up the racetrack. The 66 of Marcus Stroman trying to take advantage of that by going 3 wide for this 22nd position, nearly making some contact with the 8 who's trying to shove the 66 uh, down the racetrack as best he can. The 27 also doing a surprisingly good job of holding off uh, these two uh, on the very top side of the racetrack. Not a groove you typically see. I'm sure there's some marbles up there that uh, he'll be getting into. Uh, as the laps progress especially, but um, the 66 of Marcus Stroman will be able to get uh, by two drivers with one move there. Jeffrey Fingai has got one of the fastest cars on the racetrack and he's certainly, certainly not exactly being patient right now as he drives by the 93 after giving her a bit of a tap. Coming down into turn number one, 93 trying to hold off the 49 to get back in line, will not be able to do that. And once you get stuck on, on the outside, well, uh, you're kind of screwed. Before we could get into much of a green flag run, DJ Harris and Andrew Rick uh, got together. The 23 went around, and that would bring out our second yellow. Sam Medeo returns the field back green once again here on lap number 23. Demir Bejianov uh, trying to get a better launch than the 47. But uh, that did not exactly pan out as he's got a couple of a car lengths advantage over the 13 as we complete the first lap back under green here. I believe we got a few more cars that uh, jumped the start there. Really big stack ups around 10th place uh, when the green flag drops. This time the only culprit would be Ty Dent in the 83 who very clearly drives around the 101 before they even really exited turn four ended up in front of him at the start finish line and so he goes one lap down. Good race for eighth after the restart. Alex Allen trying to get by the 79 of Jose Bautista who's had a few good runs as of late. The 21 uh, trying to make his way past the 79 as well. Past the 20 of Jeffrey Bingai who 
I thought was one of the fastest cars at the racetrack. Currently, uh, not so much, as he's stuck on the outside. Uh, certainly not where you want to be on this half-mile oval. Mir Bejenov has been closing in on that 47 car once again, gets into his back end. Now up to his quarter panel, he's alongside the 47 and drives it in very hard into turn number one. And with that, he will get by the 47. The 47 not able to slip in behind the 13. He might have the four all over him in just a second. Matthew Nicholson, of course, able to get by for second position. The 47 really needs to get back, back in line before the 38 gets to his rear end and starts uh, chipping away. The 21 of Sidney Grass is showing that he has a fast car uh, so far today, up into the top seven, at least he would be, if he wasn't a lap down from that penalty earlier on. It's a shame because that 21 car uh, can really seem to get through this traffic, currently giving a bit of a nudge to the 49 to get by for what would be sixth as he struggles to get his lap back uh, the old-fashioned way, uh, driving through the entire field, uh, getting in front of the leader, and then just praying for a caution. Ryder Smith and Tyler Markell having some pretty solid runs so far today, up into the top 11. Uh, Smith is, at least. Uh, Tyler Markell pushed back to 12th for now. Terrence Day now going after the 10, down the curved front straightaway. And the 7 now going after the 58. Despite being at the back, these guys are having a grand old time back here. Johnny Appleseed, Sean Morrison, and Matthew, uh, Marcus Stroman, rather, were three wide down the front straightaway, ended up two wide for the remainder of the lap here as Marcus Stroman appears to be able to get by Johnny Appleseed who has significant right side damage from the opening lap collision. Alex Allen currently sitting 7th in the 49 car. The 79 all over the back of him shoves him down into turn number 1. A classic bump and run from the 79 as Jose Bautista drives by Alex Allen. I don't believe Jose actually has a ton of experience on these type of tracks. But even so, he was able to rough up uh, one of the uh, series veterans and, and grab the position. Similarly, Sam Morrow shoves the 47 up the track, gets it sideways off the corner by the 38, still alongside the 47 as Sidney Cressa and Michael Kane uh, try to jo uh, join the battle here. As uh, Sidney Cressa by Michael Kane, Sam Morrow has not cleared the 47 at all yet. 47 holding on fairly strong but falling back way back from Matthew Nicholson and Demir Bejian off the race leader. Karen Stay and Alex Allen currently racing for around, I believe that's eighth, as Ryder Smith now going after the 49 as well. What a bunch of uh, gaggle of cars we have here racing for, for position. Cameron Gadu and Annie Thomas just a few car lengths back. Harry Davis now going after the 49. The 49 losing three positions during that lap. Uh, over the course of just half a mile there. Ty Dent all over the tail end of the 24 as well, trying to make up some positions as the, Jor, uh, as the Jordanian. Amin Al Ghul struggles to make his way forward as well, as well as Shrimp Engritz and Tyler Markell. Grasta continues his charge towards getting his lap back as he's now gone by Sam Morrow for third, for what would be third position in that 21 car. Jeffrey Fingai will uh, have a go on third now he's really picked up the pace once he gets into a, just a little bit of clean air and uh, gets some heat back into those tires after the restart. He is once again on a mission towards the front. At the bottom of the top 20, Kim Markell, Pichu London, and Mike Doan racing together in this increasing uh, bundle of cars here at the tail end of the top 15. Mike Doan going after the very damaged car of, the, of number 16. Who needs a spoiler? Uh, a straight spoiler to drive at a short track. Grasta is setting a hell of a pace, even faster than that of the leader, Demir Bejenov, right now in that 21 car. The 20 is also one of the fastest cars on track and has been following Sidney Krasta's every move. Every time the 21 forced somebody high, the 20 would get through as well. And with that, Jeffrey Fingai is up to second in that number 20 car as the 21 and the 20 now, now uh, work together to try and go after the 13 of Demir Bejenov. The 21 trying to get his lap back, but the 20 going for the race win. Pichu London bumps the three, the three pushing him down to the inside as they continue to make contact off the corner. And it's Pichu London who pays the ultimate price from that. 
getting turned around by the 18 as he slid down towards the infield grass, and that will bring up the third caution of this race. The 13 of Demir Bejinov returns the field once again to the green flag uh, with just 16 laps to go as the 20 goes after the 21, the 4 alongside of him as the 21 gets turned around on the back straightaway. What a shame for the 21 as the 58 gets into the 21 and he nearly goes over. Ty Dent's got some damage, I believe, as the rest of the field has really stacked up into the corner of the three and four wide through the corners. We've got even more trouble off of the corner. It was the 83 of Ty Dent that got into the, into the back of the 58. He goes straight down pit road, creating a big stack up. But we're three, four, oh, that way they were five wide for a second come, coming off of that corner. And that didn't work as a huge stack up occurred with uh, about half the field getting at least a small piece of that. On board the double zero here as he goes through this mess. One of the cars that got out the worst out of that, the eight, the 23, the double zero, and the seven. Definitely with the most damage after that one. Uh, it would turn out that the double zero, the eight, the 58, uh, the 23, and the 83 would all retire from this incident. Just 10 laps to go as Bejianov returns the field to the green flag after that big calamity. Jeffrey Fingai still sitting in second, but not for long it appears, as Michael Kane drops along the inside. He's been in a real hurry as of late, and into second he goes. What a day it would be for him if he somehow made it up to the 13's back bumper and was able to get the job done. 72, Mike Doan reporting a flat tire. Real shame for him, he's going to have to come down pit road along with Amin Al Ghul and Johnny Appleseed. Amin Al Ghul would come back out on the lead lap, the other two, one lap down. Three wide for 21st place here as the 66 and Marcus Stroman slides way up the track into the 31, makes some contact with the 10, and he sw uh, swerves all around trying to regain control of that car, manages to do so before turn three. It's I believe Shrimp Engritz uh, got a penalty for passing before the yellow there, uh, before the uh, green flag rather. Jeffrey Fingai loses another position to the 79 car, Trying once again on the outside to gain that position back. That's definitely not going to work as Jose Bautista will uh, stay in third. It appears Fingai washes his way up the track, dove it as hard into that corner as he could, but once again to no avail. All of this chaos, the 16 of DJ Curtis with his ruined rear end has made his way up into the top eight. Unbelievable run considering the circumstances for the driver of that, that number 16 car. Michael Kane initially closed in on the 13, still within a couple of car lengths, but the 13 really pulling a bit of a gap now off of turn three and four, coming towards the white flag. Just one more lap to go for the Kazakh driver. He has not had a terrible amount of good fortune on these short tracks in his career, but today he's had a virtually flawless day, starting from the front row, uh, starting from second, of course, making his, making his way into the lead on lap 25 and he will win race one here in Motoplex, uh, uh, Motoplex Speedway in Vernon, BC. Michael Kane a close second and with that he will get the best run of his career today uh, in British Columbia. Jose Bautista, third place in the 79 car, was fast all day. Terrence Day, fourth position in the 55. The 47 of uh, Nicholas Samadillo started from pole, pole finishes fifth. Jeffrey Fingai sixth really fell off towards the end uh, of the race there. Matthew Nicholson seventh. It would be DJ Curtis in eighth in that very damaged number 16 car. Luco Brovac made his way up into ninth, and Kim Markell rounds up the top ten. Ilya Bondarenko, in contrast with Demir Bejanov, has always been good at the short tracks, and because of that, it's no surprise to see him on pole here at Motoplex Speedway. Uh, Fall of Thanos started on uh, his outside as Thanos stays alongside the 77, surprisingly, much different from uh, race number one as Ophelia and Dumian made it three wide and will successfully get third as they were three wide to the caution flag. We've already got a wreck just like race number one. Bill Littlejohn qualified poorly, but he's still trying to impress in front of his home crowd. Gets into the into the back of the zero, sending him down the track into the 11. 
back up the track. Tough lick for the zero car. No safer barrier at that spot on the back straightaway. And the 30 will also get some significant damage. The 98 car checked up and because of that continues without damage. Bondarenko returns the field back to green flag conditions here. Fall of Thanos not with a great restart as Ophelia Indumian and the two once again uh, go quickly going after positions as he uh, she damn near turned the 42 into the grass. The 42 won't be too happy about that. Somehow maintains second position through uh, turns three and four. Ophelia and Doomian trying to hold off Tyler Faber, who's, who has a really good charge on the outside through one, but uh, the two, of course, has the optimal line uh, through the, down the back straight away. The 12 trying to get clear. The two will not be able to do so as William Duncan is in the top five for once in that number six car. Would be a great uh, turnaround for him if he got a good run here today. The two is not done with the 42, though, as Thanos... I'm really surprised Thanos didn't uh, shove the two down even further uh, than she did in that corner, uh, considering what happened just a few laps ago as the two will clear Thanos off of the corner. Ophelia and Dumian into second position with a combination of uh, rough driving on the restarts and a bit cleaner uh, once, once things got going. Washer yet again uh, inside the top 10, no surprise ever since St. Croix, like I said in round 11. Uh, he has been on fire. Brandon Prasta and Sawyer Girl going along the inside though. Matt Duncan also inside the top 10 trying to follow his uh, his team owner through towards the front. The two closing in right on the back bumper of the 77 now as the 42 dives it in the corner shoves the two way up the track. That's more like what I was expecting the first time as the two gets into the wall. A little bit of reverse psychology I guess by Thanos there as uh, and Dumian loses several positions because of that. A great maneuver by the 42, though she also slid up the racetrack, and that will let Alex Tanker through into second. Faber's gotten by the 2 4 third position. I actually, no, that's fourth, rather. As Zachriel shoves the two up the racetrack just a little bit. A uh, little bit of contact between those two. As Zachriel had a great run back in Twin Ring Motegi, trying to back it up here. Seems the confidence gains from the previous rounds really helped these guys uh, get their way to the front in the following round. Uh, momentum seems to be huge here in the Hard Pro Series. The 52 currently rubbing up the 69 trying to get to his inside as that's not going to work. The 69 gets turned around off of the corner. Gerald Reddington and Bill Littlejohn just barely uh, avoid uh, getting into a serious collision with the 69 but the caution is out regardless. Green flag back out for the 77 of Ilya Bondarenko, the 15 with a phenomenal start. Alex Tanker has been historically incredible at these uh, short tracks. He's gotten two or three of his five wins at, at this type of track before, including last year at the uh, season finale in Flamborough. As Ilya Bondarenko uh, will lead that lap and will return the field back to caution status. Carlin Dumian gets into the back of J.R. Fitzpatrick, sending him down uh, into the grass. Comes back up the track, taking out Carlin Dumian and himself in the process. Just had no grip uh, on his tires when he re-entered the track, and that was the result. Uh, a third caution of the race, all within 25 laps. Bondarenko, green flag back out for him. Tanker and Thanos with a much better start. Hopefully we can get a bit of a green flag run here. It's worth three wide for the lead after no battles over the course of the first 25 laps for that position. Suddenly, Ilya Bondarenko has two chargers up his inside. Thanos gets by both Tanker and Bondarenko to the lead. Bondarenko still heading backwards in a hurry. Got overtaken by Faber and, and Girl, but luckily for him, the caution is back out and he's going to have a chance to get back single file here. Zeus Morrow all over the back end of the 41, turns him down the racetrack into Fitzwater and a tough lick for the two of them. The 41 nearly rolled it over there. Gerald Reddington gets a bit of a piece. That's not going to help his uh, championship contention as they continue wrecking down towards the pit lane. Carlin Dumian still spinning it out there. A little bit of chaos there down the back. Straight away, caution out once again. Thanos returns the field to the green flag with a much better start than any of the ones that Bondarenko got earlier on uh, in this race. These starts much cleaner 
and uh, without penalty than the ones we saw in race number one. These guys were obviously paying attention from their double, double wides uh, in the infield earlier on this evening. Zachary Fitzwater and Rusty Babinski uh, went a lap down due to the latest caution, I believe I forgot to mention, is Gerald Reddington. Uh, not much patience there, the driver of the 112 making his way by two cars to get his way back into a position that might help his uh, points uh, spot a little bit better. The 99 of Matt Duncan's gone by his teammate in the 6 and is currently racing with the 01 who tried squeezing the 99 down to no avail. The 71 of Richard Falinski now up into uh, around 6th uh, position as Ophelia Dumian has gotten by Ilya Bondarenko, albeit a little bit too late for that to be a pass for the lead. John Thompson Jr. has cracked the top 15, teammate to J.R. Fitzpatrick. The two of them have raced here quite a few times before in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, and uh, it's no surprise that he is making his way forward as such today. After London's terrible run in race number one, Luke Walker trying to uh, get some money for TA2 racing. They have not been doing great as of recently, and I'm sure they're running a little bit low on funds, so it's uh, good to see him up in the top 10 as Rusty Babinski's gone for a spin. Once again, he was already a lap down, and that'll bring out the yellow, I believe. Thanos got by Rusty Babinski just fine, but Tanker, all over the back of the 41, got into the back of him, spun him around into the grass, and that would bring out the fifth yellow. 24 laps to go as Thanos returns the field back to the green flag. Alex Sanger currently sitting in second, Faber third, Ophelia Ndumi in fourth, and Matt Duncan has made his way up into the top five as, we, as we've got a three-y battle um, just a bit further back is Fitzwater. Uh, Duncan and Luke Walker are side by side. Fitzwater is of course one lap down at the very least, maybe even two for the 44 or four car and he is significantly off the pace on the straightaways. No straight line speed whatsoever, which makes sense considering how much the back end is pushed up. We're too wide for several rows coming into turn one, just outside the top 20, I believe, as Zeus Morrow gets into the back of Daniel Boyles. Around goes Andreas Allen. Will Hoyt swerves down to the inside to avoid it. Bill Littlejohn gets a big piece of that. That might take him out of the race even, which would be a real shame as, yeah, I mean, there's smoke pouring out of that car. He is done for the day. Dead last for the driver that uh, is, of course, the crowd favorite. Just 16 to go for Thanos to hold the rest of the field off of charging Alex Tanker going once again for the lead as Faber's all over the back of him. However, Faber has been sitting there silently in third, perhaps conserving his stuff for these final few laps that uh, Tanker moved up the track. Faber did not, and I think that's a clear example of how Faber might be in the best position here. He doesn't seem to be as fast, though, as Thanos and Tanker begin to pull away, and Dumian's all over his rear end, falls back a few car lengths as she had to check up. Matt Duncan still sitting in fifth position as Ilya Bondarenko struggles to make his way back into the top six, past Chris Washer. Brandon Krasta blows an engine on the restart, and that caused a huge stack of Gerald Reddington that nearly ended up in the infield grass of, as a result of that, I believe Spencer Fullerton might have ended up with a uh, black flag for that. I don't know whether that was justified though, considering the circumstances. Yes, he did. Zach Riel also in as well. I believe Spencer Fullerton may have passed another vehicle as well, but uh, either way, the two of them will go one lap down. Fitzwater ended up midfield for the restart, and because of that, he, he is really holding up uh, some of the drivers. James O'Shea in the back of him turns him down into Andreas Allen. They all save it. But uh, James O'Shea, I'm sure, not happy with Fitzwater being out on track, even though Fitzwater is being a bit of a gracious backmarker, letting Zach Riel and the whole inside line through, pretty much. James O'Shea has definitely had enough of Fitzwater by now, as Fitzwater gets sent into the wall once again, nearly spins down the track. No caution for this, as Fitzwater continues on perhaps even slower than he was before. It's nice to see Maxwell Chan having a good run for once up into the top 12 along with Ali Nelson who hasn't had the best season. Uh, and Matthew Stringer and Chris Washer battling for position around for around 8th currently as we come to around 6 laps to go this time. Thanos has opened up an enormous gap on 
on Faber and Tanker, who are running third and second respectively. But now she's hit a bit of a roadblock as she's stuck behind the 44 of Zachary Fitzwater. She really needs to get around the 44 if she can con confirm victory uh, here in race number two at Motoplex Speedway. Just two laps to go as Tanker is coming in a real hurry. The 42 needs to get around Fitzwater now. Absolutely now. Tries the outside once again, not able to make it stick. Here comes the 15 up the inside. The 42 once again tries to, to get the outside working here. We'll be able to do so now. The 15 trying to split the 44. As the 15 gets into the back of the 44, and the three of them go into the wall, and that will give Tyler Faber the lead with just a couple of corners to go here. Faber was third entering this final lap, but off of the final corner, he will lead just the final 10 seconds of this event to win here in Motoplex Speedway. Ophelia and Dumian ends up getting second there, a bit of a surprise for her, I'm sure, after entering that final lap in fourth. Tanker uh, managed to get his car back going again, gets third, not what he was looking for though. Matt Duncan fourth position, and Paula Thanos after leading by, um, by far the most laps of this event will finish in fifth position. William Duncan sixth in the number six car. Uh, Luke Walker seventh in the 100. Uh, it would be Ilya Bondarenko and, uh, and Richard Trelinski, a pair of veterans, eighth and, ninth, eighth and ninth. And Chris Washer, once again, another great run for him, rounding out the top ten.